So what is it like working with Tuatara then? I can't even comprehend what it must be like. Yeah, that they're really interesting animals. They're really they're they're really, really subtle. Um it's it would be really easy to think that Tuatara don't do anything and they're just they're quite they're quite switched off because it's sh- it's subtle shifts, it's small tells, it, you know, it's it, it's it's almost the, it's almost like the unsaid things that that, that that you know what's up with them, and um, I found I found that you know working with Tuatara, I've, I've, I've really really had to you know dial into not only the not only animal and the species but but the individuals as well. But um, yeah, I um, I mean I've I've been working with Tuatara a, a lot for the last seven years, and I, um, there is uh, not a single part of me that is bored of Tuatara. You know, I love Tuatara. I think they're great. Um, you know, seeing them in the wild, working with them in in the zoo, bring them in the wild, um, do it. Get you know, going on a release. You know, actually, you know, getting to release some of the animals that we've you know we've been working with back to the wild. That's 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 gold standard stuff in my opinion. Yeah, it doesn't Sounds get much better than that. Very fulfilling. Yeah, absolutely. So some of the subtleties, what is it? They just kind of like squint and look at you a little bit, or what, what um, are the things that it's, it's you know, not noticing them basking when they'd normally be basking. It's um it's uh, the you know, the way they may be holding themselves, it's it's uh not 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 noticing that they've um you know, you know, so s- certain individuals will like every single night they'll 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 foul their water bowl, they'll drag themselves through it. Um, you know, and if that's not happening, you know, maybe something's off, maybe they just weren't active that night, you know, uh, the digging or not digging of test of test burrows, you know, the slightest, slightest sort of shifts, shifts in the females, um, uh, sort of you know, body shape, you know, when approaching, uh, of, of ovulation, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's, 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 it's quite hard to articulate what I'm, what I'm trying to say, but you know, a snake ovulates and it blows up. It looks like it's swallowed a football, but with, um, with, um, with totes, it's all, it's all far more sort of nuanced. What are some major differences that you have found between what it's like to work with those versus lizards? Is there anything, anything there that's like, wow, that sets them apart other than what they look like? Um, there's such there's such diversity and variation in lizards it's it's sort of hard to separate it out because there are lizards that you, that it, they're very very crocodilian in their care there's lizards that are very very sort of chelonian in their care so I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't it'd be hard to pin down sort of like oh this is really not lizardy but the fact they're happiest at 16 degrees 16 degrees is a happy place you know that that's when they're most active that's when that's as optimal they're they're still active at three or four degrees you know that's that's you know that's absolutely acceptable temperature for a tuatara to be feeding and doing stuff and um those those things are weird that's i mean that's really weird um the fact that they their metabolism just runs so much cooler and they lay eggs you know that they, they they are a they are a you know temperate cold adapted egg laying reptile whereas just about every other other reptile that's um cold adapted it's it's it, you know re- realistically it's a it, it's 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 a live bearer you know you know new zealand new zealand's got two species of reptile that lay eggs the egg laying skink sufficiently weird enough to be named the egg laying skink and to atara and there's a 123 124 species of reptile in new zealand quite a lot then yeah, yeah and, and the rest are live bearers. Everything else is a live bearer. So when it comes to incubation then, do their their eggs incubate at a much lower temperature as well? Yep. Yep, yep. And they've also got um uh, temperature sex determination, so uh warm warm as boys, cold as girls. What are the boundaries for temperatures for those then? Oh, you... I'd have to I'd have to double check it, otherwise I'd be pulling numbers out of the air and uh, I wouldn't do that to your podcast, mate. Can people keep Tuataras privately in New Zealand? Um, in theory, there is one person licensed to keep Tuatara privately in New Zealand who, who does. But there is not a lot of appetite from the Department of Conservation to issue um, issue um, licenses. Um, and so there's an additional dimension to keeping um, and 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 working in the conservation space, 
in New Zealand that um, you know I, I I I as a you know Brit- British person considered when i moved there and um it was, was really new to me and that's um uh, e- e- like consulting with iwi iwi consultation and um there are you know there is a, a, sorry a, 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 an iwi is a, is a maori tribe and there are iwi who have um uh, mana well, which is government sort of basically sort of power and government gov- governance over certain species so if i wanted to keep a tuatara privately i would have to do a consultation with Nati Kawata, who are the iwi who have governance with Tuatara, and um, and ha- and and get them on board before I even did my per- before I even did my permit application. So you know the the idea of speaking to a um, group of people from another from from you know another part of the country or you know in, in mostly in 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 the case of um, uh, in, English. Um, herb to culture another another country uh, to get permission to apply for a permit to keep the animal i mean it's it's almost unheard of what well, it is you know and and the, and it's the same process for the zoos so if if a british zoo was to want to keep to atara and receive to atara from new zealand they would have to fly members of iwi over to do a consultation and um have the conversation with them apply for the permit and then um members of iwi would fly with the tuatara and perform a ceremony um uh when when you know when the, to, to to welcome the tuatara to to their new homes and um it, again it's it's a, it's a it's a very very different landscape yeah it's a very different landscape it sounds i think chester zoo have them don't they they do yeah and um chester chester, chester zoo flew nati kawata over and um yeah they worked with mana Fenua to um yeah do do to do the right steps to um you know have the have the tuatara come and Come and live. Come and live there. That's so cool. I didn't realize it was like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, any of the so we do, we do, we, we've got a fair few breed for release programs at the zoo, and um, we 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 have to we have to we have to deal with and manage with all, all the stakeholders. So it's often council, landowners, uh, iwi, and, and and ourselves, sort of al- almost at a minimum. So you know we're, we're uh, at, at the moment. We're we're doing we're doing you know huge number of wetapunga releases and um, yeah we're dealing with de- we're, yeah we're dealing with all of those people to make sure that everyone's needs met everyone's happy everyone understands what we're doing and why we're doing it and we've got all the appropriate permissions um, permissions and permits to do that um, legally and in, in in a manner that everyone's happy with. It sounds cool though. I, I like the idea of that that level of appreciation for nature. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, absolutely. And um, what's really nice with um, uh, the uh, Maori culture is the value and the appreciation they have for not only the land and the ecosystem, but the but the species as well. Yeah, they um they refer to them as um Tonga or ta- 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 Tawanga um Tonga Tonga. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that, despite the fact I've been there for seven years. My my um my tongue is still very British, unfortunately. Um, but the the the, the literal translation is treasure. You know, Tuatara are a Tonga species. You know, they are a treasure species. They are something precious, and um yeah, that level of value and cultural significance. I think I think more species could more species would benefit from having that. <laughs> 